this video goes along with chapter 17 of this book and in this video I'm gonna do the same analysis as in the previous video on chapter 16 but then I'm gonna do it with shell elements instead of beam elements and show the differences in results and I'm gonna compare the results of the shell analysis to the beam analysis and the analytical results so here you see a sheet that I've shown in the previous video as well it uh, this it shows the advantages and disadvantages of certain element types and the analysis that I'm doing in these two chapters is a particular one because it can be done with solids shells and beams uh, and it only that only works when you have a, a beam construction because you can you can do every analysis with sol ele solid ele elements but not every analysis with beam elements so here you've got the the, the profile as done in uh, in chapter 16 as well and this is the setup that I'm going to use in this chapter uh, you see here that the the neutral axis the neutral line is at 88 millimeters difference 88 millimeters distance from from each other so I'm going to draw this profile and do a shell analysis and then compare the results for that I've already generated a table so I'm going to fill out these two values in this video and the other values in the the next video and this one this one I've already filled out in the the previous chapter chapter 16 here you can also see discussion on the difference in the the deflection in the analysis as done previously and, and we're expecting to see the same value as this deflection in this video and the same stress as well and there's going to be a little difference probably because when I go a slide back we're going to do uh, a little bit of a, a simplification of the problem because this this area with a radius you don't have so we're ex expecting to see a little bit of a different uh, a little bit of a larger reflection and a little bit of a larger maximum stress in the analysis that we're going to do right now so i'm going to switch over to solidworks simulation and generate the profile so i'm going to draw on this surface and oh no, I'm not going to draw on this surface, I'm going to draw on this surface, the, the cross section of the beam and the height should be 44 and the, the width should be 100 according to the profile as I've drawn previously so these two lines should be equal in length and then the total length should be 100 from there to there 100 and then let me see. Uh, yeah, it can only move in that direction. Then I can uh, draw a center line to mirror these lines that I already have. So I'm going to mirror these three lines in this center line. And then I'm going to enter the, the total height, which is going to be 88. And then I'm going to use the surface toolbar and create extrudes of the surface so this one this one this and this and the advantage of using two different lines over here is that the the surfaces will immediately be glued to each other in a solidworks simulation and i'm going to extrude it over one meter to uh, imitate the the analysis as done in chapter 16 and when i use such surfaces SOLIDWORKS simulation will automatically generate shell elements so I'm going to go over to SOLIDWORKS simulation create a new simulation study and the material is already taken into account but I have to specify the thickness of these four surfaces let me see these four should have a, a thickness of 8 so I'm going to do 8 here I, I'm choosing thick uh, in that way SOLIDWORKS simulation will take the bending stress in this uh, surfaces into account and if I use thin SOLIDWORKS simulation won't do that and the other surface should be 5 millimeters thickness so that's this one this one should be 5 millimeters and then I'm ready to start doing my fixtures I'm gonna do immovable for these two they can still rotate which is uh, what I want to accomplish and then fix the other side as well 
to realize a, a, a distributed load. Uh, here I'm going to do the advanced with use reference geometry. I want to restrain these two lines from moving in this direction and I can do that by uh, pushing this button then. I see the preview arrows of the direction in which this line cannot move right now. So that should be good. Then I'm going to enter the load force on these two surfaces distributed load and it should be a total so not per item because then I would have a this force on both surfaces I'm gonna use a total of 100 Newton per millimeter which is 100,000 Newton over a meter and this part is a meter long so that's exactly the same units as done with the beam analysis in this way uh, oh, this uh, direction goes into the this force goes into the wrong direction. Let me see. Uh, I'm gonna then divide it by half. So a total of 50,000 in this direction, and then also a total of 50,000 in the other direction, in the other surface. So reverse like that. Okay, so now I'm uh, ready to run the study. I'll save the file. And then run it. I see now the Vermeese stress. I'm not going to go look at that. I'm going to first look at the displacement, which is in this case 2.44 millimeters. So I'm going to enter that in the table as uh, shown previously. Uh, 2.44 is a, a little bit larger than the 2.1. And the reason for that is, when I go sheet back again, is because I've not modeled this radius that I have over here. So the, the part is a little weaker. So it's uh, 2.44 millimeters is the shell result. And I'm going to have a look at the maximum stress. So I'm going to define a stress plot in the x direction is the stress caused by the bending of the the beam and I can see a maximum value over here of 230 237 which is a little bit larger than the maximum stress in the beam analysis and the reason for that is the same it's because this radius here is not modeled in this analysis. So this is uh, the stress in x direction caused by bending and you see the stress is a little bit uh, seems to be a little bit bigger on the down uh, the lower surface than on the upper surface. If you want to have a look at the, the complete value I can probe this uh, surface and I can see it's now 1.77 Newton per square millimeter 1.77 which is a little bit higher than the in the previous analysis and I can also probe this one it's uh, 150 on the on the upper surface so it, it is comparable but the difference is in this case caused by the the radius that I haven't modeled in in this situation but at least I've, I've shown how to analyze a shell element and also what the, the most important uh, reason for making this video is is when I go a couple of sheets back is that I see that uh, the speed of the beam analysis is the fastest I can also draw a moment graph uh, the shell elements have more possibilities than the beam analysis for example if you want to model uh, a, a sheet metal construction for example uh, a casing for for holding uh, forces or supporting forces then you can do that with shell elements but not with beam elements and in the next video on chapter on chapter 18 I'm going to do the solid analysis and then fill out this table completely so that was the the video on the shell analysis thanks for watching